I have another mailbag question today, and this one comes from Svetza Oracle. And a lot of people have asked me this question, so I thought I'd make a quick video to uh, tell everyone at the same time. And uh, what Svetza Oracle asked me about is what is the program that I use in my videos to make all my diagrams? Uh, in particular, the diagrams that I use in microeconomics, where I'm uh, drawing supply and demand and, and uh, shading areas and things. And this is the program that I use. It's called Inkscape, I-N-K-S-C-A-P-E, and it's free. And I try to use free software as much as I can these days. You have the benefit of uh, the authors not usually changing things all the time like Microsoft and other software uh, programs do or requiring you to buy a new version whenever you get a new operating system, for example. Uh, I run Inkscape on um, Windows PCs. I'm not sure whether other platforms are available or not. Um, and you can find a lot of videos on YouTube about how to do neat things in Inkscape. Very Make very fancy drawings. I'm not going to make fancy drawings, but what I'm going to do is spend a couple of minutes showing you some tricks about how you can use Inkscape to make diagrams uh, like the ones that I do on the videos. Uh, now the first thing that I did that helped my ability to make these videos is I went into Excel and I made a little grid in Excel just by highlighting borders and putting numbers in there. Let me load that for you and, and show you what it looks like. So this is just a, a JPG or a JPEG file and so let me open the window here where you can see it and then I can zoom by clicking this little Z button down here and so I, I made this in Excel and then what I did is uh, saved it as a PDF and then from the PDF saved it as a JPG file there's probably an easier way but I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is now I use this grid so that I can um, graph particular lines, uh, particular linear equations and plot points very easily so I can see what the numbers are. The second trick that I discovered is um, for any figure, line, or a JPEG like this, if you uh, have the little selection arrow and you select it, you can go down to this little box at the bottom with an O next to it and that's for opacity. Uh, it controls how transparent it is and by clicking this button you can make your figure more and more transparent. I like doing this because it uh, you can still see the numbers, you can still see the grid, but it allows you to see the other lines and figures that you draw on top of it much more easily. Now the main thing that I, I usually do when I'm um, using a program in my classes or for my videos is I'll use this tool right here called Draw Bezier Curves and Straight Lines and when you click on that uh, it allows you to draw uh, polygons and straight lines pretty easily. So for example if I wanted to graph the equation 14 minus 2x uh, single click and release up here at the 14 the y-intercept and then it's hard to see but there's a little line that you can uh, drag around anywhere you want and then um, you just want to find the other end of the line where you want that to be and to, to stop the line you double click. Whoops, I accidentally right clicked, so let me do that again. Start at 14, go down to 7 and double click. And there's a little line. Once you have the line you can go up to the little selection arrow and you can move it up or down. Whoops, I accidentally moved the background. That's, that is a problem sometimes. Uh, you'll accidentally drag something that you don't want, you don't mean to. Uh, but a great uh, function in Inkscape is Control Z for undo. So if you accidentally do something, you can undo it and put it right back the way it was pretty easily. Just Control Z. Um, but so I have to be more careful and select my line. There you go. And so you can move it around, or you can make it bigger, and you can change the slope. You can do all kinds of things. But I just want to undo what I just messed up. So Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, and I'm back to where I was. Now you can also change the color pretty easily. If you want to change the color of a line, hold down the shift key and you see these nice colors down at the bottom. 
hold down the shift key and you can change it to be red or blue for example and we'll go back to this tool draw bezier curves and straight lines and maybe we want to graph a supply curve here so single click release and then double click at the other end of the line and we can hold down the shift key and click on red to make that line red um, one of my favorite things is the ability to very easily use this exact same tool the draw bezier curves and lines to draw triangles for consumer surplus and dead weight loss uh, to draw a polygon like a triangle you just click where the first vertex is click where the second is click where the third is and then go back to the beginning and single click and now you've got a nice little polygon in order to change the the color on the outside the outline of the polygon you can shift click like we did before and I can change it to that nice pink if you want to change the inside color just without the shift key just click on the color and that'll change the fill color of your polygon so you can go over here and say I want to draw a consumer surplus triangle so just uh, go down here and click 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 and you're done and then I can change that to be yellow by clicking on the yellow um, now another thing that you uh, might want to do let me undo that by hitting control Z um, suppose what you did first is um, you put in a total surplus by highlighting all that area um, you can do that or you can do consumer surplus I'm going to show you a little trick here that I actually already showed you suppose you have consumer surplus and now you want to um, tell people where the uh, producer surplus sorry the, the total surplus is and here we go total surplus I'm just going to draw on top of everything there and you say wait a minute now I can't see the consumer surplus anymore well you can go down and use this little opacity tool that we did before and I really like the fact that when the uh, when the top becomes less opaque that the red underneath and the yellow on top turns into orange like I guess it should and that's that's pretty nice uh, another little trick that I like is um, if you wanted to shift a demand curve but make sure that it's perfectly parallel and to do it really quickly you can click the select object let's select that demand curve and you can hit uh, control C control V to make a, a copy and the copy will be in a different place but it will automatically be uh, parallel and see I'm, I'm accidentally moving the background again let me hit control Z to reset things it is kinda hard to select the right line sometimes I'm sure there's a trick that I'm missing but uh, so now you can just move this demand curve parallel anywhere you want makes things pretty nice and easy um, one thing that um, I, I've found kind of annoying, the last trick that I'll show you real quickly is um, sometimes uh, suppose you just wanted to draw a big greater than sign. So uh, let's use this uh, draw bezier curve. Suppose we had that selected. Suppose I just wanted to make a really big greater than sign by uh, this last click is going to be a double click. Instead of a greater than sign, it automatically fills in that area if you want to make that area hollow um, or perfectly transparent that's easy enough that's what this little red X here on the color bar is for and that will get rid of the fill altogether so uh, this is just barely scratching the surface of the things that you can do Oh, last thing sorry last thing that I really like is the ability to really easily um, label things so you just click the letter over here click on the surface anywhere and start typing you know demand click over here you know demand to for example and supply um, and you can move and resize and change the color and, and and all the things that you would expect to be able to do with any kind of good drawing program but this one was particularly easy to use very cheap and um, I like it give it a try. So if you have any other questions, please send me an email. This is uh, Berkey Academy signing off.